Hey everybody, welcome back for another segment of the Enough Talk, the New Order card by card evaluation. We're still cutting through the personalities, so if you love Unicorn, this is your video. I'm Jesse, that's Paul, and this is Ide Hi, everybody. Hidishi. Topaz Champion. Um, okay. Phoenix shout out. Phoenix shout out. Why? Oh, right. Um, well, so we're coming to the end of this. Our our this card, by the way, show totally should have been a spider. I can't believe AJ beat me in that top four with this stupid like one cavalry guy. What a nut draw. Anyway, um, we haven't spent a lot of time talking about these sort of goofy, weird invest things or the the funny draft implications of it. This is one. Like I prefer this type of building of of the extra flavor in, as opposed to the other one because this one might come up in constructed play, right? Like there, it's not inconceivable that you just get an extra free little bonus in a in a one on one constructed matchup with your unicorn deck v phoenix, and I I prefer that. I prefer cards that may somehow sort of carry on past the one time you draft them. So I mean I, I prefer that design. Do you have any opinion or not really? Well, we've seen a bunch. We've seen a couple cards like this before. There's the Mantis guy who invests for zero and gets Conqueror if another player is Phoenix. I play. Like, that's a card I've actually played, and a card I've actually played successfully in draft as well. Uh, and there's a few others that have reduced cost stuff if another player is another clan. Yeah. They can't make these sorts of effect too good because if it turns into an actual hoser, if they start printing um, Purge of Fudaoism for actual human clans, players will get upset. But spraying right. some f stuff around here and there is fine. My my only complaint about this sort of ability is just that, that it's it's restricted in how powerful it'd be. And because it's restricted in that power level, like, okay, I get plus one force if you're a crab. Okay, I get, you know, a little, like, two gold cheaper guy. Do I really care? That's true. Um, if if the invest is too, like so, when you read that line, you know the invest isn't going to be that powerful, because if it's a really powerful invest, you can't ever make it free. Otherwise, when you get it for free, it's this sort of like dirtily, ha ha! I rolled all my sixes and Yahtzee, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's not really good design. So, uh, so we should break this guy down. He's, he's a two three for six three pH courtier, so he's another cog to honor decks for unicorn. Yep. He doesn't bow to make three gold, so he's probably not. Slotting into any decks right away, but his invest I think is solid. So it's basically your opponent is going to use his holding. It's independent of whether or not it gains you honor or it gains you both honor or it causes him honor loss. Right? Like I, as a as a player of L five R, you can't just stop using a holding because something else might happen when you use it. I'm you know I, I feel pretty confident in that. So I feel like that invest will give you what an extra two maybe three honor over the course of the game and that's pretty solid for two gold right so eight gold guy gives you three ph off a full claim plus say maybe another three three honor over the course of the game feels pretty good for me i think he'll slot into any kind of defensive honor deck for unicorn yeah it depends how it pans out my concern is that running in multiples this guy does get worse and worse because as the game progresses there's going to be holdings there's going to be surplus gold uh, and one of the problems that I've run in when I was right. testing, for example, the economic denial deck that runs stifling wins in contested markets, um, is that at some point there's a threshold that's crossed and players just have more gold than you can interact with meaningfully. And so the first, uh, the first Hadishi that you buy, you hit a holding maybe on turn three, and you're going to get value out of mm -hmm. that. You'll get the exactly the two or three you're talking about. I think the second or the third one that you bring out and you hit another holding those holdings, they're going to start reaching a point where they don't have to bow them. They, if they have to bow it, they will. But it's not a guarantee they I, will have to. I, I do think we're sort of exposing our, our lack of uh, experience with the uh, sensei related to Unicorn. Uh, this is one of those things where I kind of wish I could just like call up Richard and, and talk, ask him some questions really quick. I don't know... The, does the sensei interaction... You know, They have this Unicorn Honor Sensei that like gives out wealth tokens so there might be some kind of interaction there where it's like i i put i target the, the holding that if they bother give then i give it also the wealth token sort of incentivizing them to 
use it. I don't know. I'm reaching around my head a little bit here. But um, I think he's good, independent of... You're right. The late game concerns legitimate. But, you know, you, that's, you can make a similar point for any, any per- personality. I think that, you know, you, you, hit, you flip one and the first one gets you stuff. And after that, you just don't waste your time investing. He's just a guy you proclaim. Yeah. Uh, you need to have a certain saturation. <laughs> of Excuse me. I don't is. know about the cavalry trade. I don't know about merchant trade. These might be completely superfluous. Yeah. But it is, it is a six gold fits. for three pH courtier. So it's, it ain't for nothing. Um, I think it's a solid guy. It'll go in a lot. It'll go in the decks that are looking for a six gold for three pH guy. Any honor that you gain off the invest is all gravy. So solid personality. Uh, try him out is my verdict. I do also want to take a moment just to shout out um, Sukahime Sensei, the Sensei that lets you like align the quarters. So it's not really good, and we'll get to this when we talk about Sensei because it has the minus one gold production thing. But I do think that we're slowly hitting a point where you might be able to construct a like a generic honor deck where you like you run one of this set courtier from this faction and another and so that like you just have this like amalgamation of like rent courtiers from across the factions all with like three ph and it just might be like a cool fun little thing you can do i don't know if it was pretty close before or maybe we'll see all right we've got i I think it was close in the way that all defensive water decks hey it's more or less the exact same commentary only less exciting it's full gold through ph destined when you go second which is going to be quite a lot for Unicorn Honor, um, you're not wasting your time or your money for a piece of force in the cavalry trade. Uh, no fuss, no muss. I probably put him in my Unicorn Honor deck before I put the other guy. To be honest, just because this is this is what you're trying to do. You know, you can go, you can do a draw with Unicorn right now. You go him on one plus holding and just go claim on turn one, two, three, four, five, and hope that gets you there. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, he's good. We like um, Cordon Destin. I think that whether you play this guy or the other guy is going to depend entirely on the value of the cavalry trait. If Unicorn Military ends up being really good and you see a lot of early game strap up attack, you're going to want that cavalry courtier that can cav defend yeah, and then there. play a meaningful action. But if that ends up being irrelevant, then 4 gold, 3 pH, and a card is phenomenal. I would play it every time. Rips through your deck, gets to your. Fate side honor generation, so you get that little bit of edge against, say, Crane, which is the deck that this guy is gunning against. Um, I I do think that I li- of all the of all the sort of bizarro on like so th- there seems to be a let's try to give every theme every faction an honor theme subtext right I mean everybody's got something that they're doing except maybe I get yeah even Mantis everybody's got some kind of honor plan baked in at this point Mm. i actually think that unicorn is the one that is unexplored and unplayed that might actually hover a little bit closer to tier one than the other ones obviously crane honor is a real thing phoenix honor is a real thing and i think lion honor is a real thing past that you're you're struggling to convince me i don't, don't care for mantis i don't care for spider i don't care for dragon but i i I think you can maybe talk me into Unicorn Honor. I think that they have some really interesting, they have some really interesting options. And five gold remains bigger than four or three gold. To that, I will say that this card, if you don't like, let me gather my thoughts here. So, like the Samusu guys in Spider. If you don't like these Sensei sub themes that you're getting, these sorts of cards can be a little bit tilting. That. Unicorn that is usually this cavalry attack or spider that's usually by big guys attack suddenly it gets a four yep. gold one four three pH courtier merchant guy uh, so this is right. this is a sort of design restriction they've placed on themselves that can add a lot more grenades to new sets for players that aren't interested in this sort of thing so yep. I, I don't know where the player base falls in any of that but it's just an interesting thing to point out that this is worse than a coaster if you have no interest in unicorn honor. Um, and the fact that we're going to see more guys like that every set, presumably always going forward, because there'll always be these sensei sub themes, is something to think about. Yep. All right. Our first military personality, Moto Chizura. And she's pretty awesome. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a home run. So, born is sin. It gives us the ninth, you know, the third non-unique, 3-3 three, three for 6, water, cavalry, or non-cavalry, but water Shugenja. Mm -hmm. But uh, instead of cavalry, you get Conqueror, and Conqueror is exactly what that deck is in the market for. Put on your big spells onto a Conqueror, and now you're making, uh, you're making good offensive assaults, and you're having some defensive prowess it triggers it sets up reprisals and things. this is a really good card it works really well with the cavalry guy that moves in and an, an infantry personality which, which is a splash that a lot of the shugenja decks have been in the market for um and you can always just guidance and war to give it cavalry too guidance yep. and war is a home run so that was a deck that i was really high on before world championships and then it won the world championships obviously a a tighter evolved build from where i was but I felt good about that deck, and I think that this is a card that slots into it just sweetly. Uh, I actually got, I played that deck on a video on the Yacht Talk website. Everybody go check it out. And it's an awesome deck. It has a lot of play to it, um, a lot of strategic flexibility. Yep. And Conqueror really can be integral to that deck. It lets you make a huge super unit, uh, strap up an attack. And like Paul said, you, give, you can give Cavalry pretty easily. Moreover, though, I don't think... Cavalry's not what it used to be. Uh, I think everybody right. knows that. So not ha not having Cavalry, some percentage of your deck not being Cavalry doesn't matter. Uh, and I could make a point yep. about how with Guidance, gaining Conquer is one goal, gaining Cavalry is three goals, so it's actually more gold efficient to give out Conquer to a Cavalry than Cavalry to a Conquer. But I don't think it matters. I think you want oh, yeah. a certain number of Conquerors in your deck, and you are willing to sacrifice a certain number of cavalry personalities to get them. So this guy's sweet. Uh, definitely will be played. played not just in the Shugenja builds, too. It will be played in some big item builds. It will probably maybe be played in some swarmy builds just because, you you know, Conquer, we've talked about this, when, con when you go first or when you're an aggressive deck and you're sort of trying to take tempo, Conquer can really help you maintain that advantage. Uh, and so it's really good. One side comment about art in the Unicorn Faction. A problem I'm running into now that we have cavalry and non-cavalry guys is I really wish the art was more indicative of who's cavalry and who's not. And like this the one, old, like, if they're on a horse, they must have cavalry kind of thing? I think so. It's it's the whipper wool problem uh, for magic players. Uh, for non-magic players yeah, out there, did... whipper, whipper wool, whipper whirl was a, was whipper a, will. a creature. Whatever. When the whipper wells, it whippers in the wind. It's a creature the from way back in the day. Whipper in magic, back. And it, it, oh, the everybody. picture, the picture depicts a bird in flight, but the the card does not have a flying trade. So everybody saw whipper will and assumed that the thing was flying, but it wasn't. It confused people and everybody hated it. So they that game actually now will change card mechanics to match the art. Uh, and I wish yep. L5R did a little bit of that, you know? Just so, as a player, I look at the card, okay, it's a dude on a boat, he's got navel. He's a dude by water, he's got navel. It's a dude with, on a horse, he's got cavalry. I know it sounds silly, but, like, we made, we, we started to look, read this card, and it tripped us up for a second. Like, is it cav, is it not cav? Like, I don't know, there's all these weird little traits. Some of them are bulls, some of them are not. I think every little bit. And helps. I sort of like this art, but, man... I do feel like, for some reason, uh, unicorn art always just, the color seems to bleed through more to me mentally. Like, I kind of wish the art director would tell him to just like, okay, purple is good, but it doesn't have to be all purple. You can you can let some non-purple shine through there, fellas. I like this art because it reminds me of Shahai, and I'm high on Nice. Shahai. All right. Motor, motor okay. Motor Speaking Nibble. of which, so now this card, this card does not picture a horse but it does have cavalry but we do appear to be sort of floating magically through the air so that's very cavalry-esque despite having the water yeah, it's sort of movement-y i Can don't you know see what i'm saying i like, like this art though so i guess yeah it's cool yep. art. um has the, has the void trade as well so that's neat um a little lower force we're so used to the three three that when you see the two floors split you're you're kind of like hey wait a minute but it turns out it doesn't matter because you just give it the, the stone card and then you gain your force right back. Yep, stones of um, And that's a... Uh, yep. And this is... There's the spider courtier that has a similar effect, right? After after you bow the stuff without it, you know, destroy it. 
this one has to be without it. But uh, I like this version of it. I like the fact that I have a guy with, with some force who's a Shugenja who can do other things and hold other uh, playable actions. And then every now and then, I'm going to bow her to kill something and feel pretty great about myself. Absolutely. And she's obviously a girl that's going to want to be holding your stones of purity because it puts her to six force. And that makes a yep. fear effect. And hey, hey, she interacts with fear effects. So the whole thing sort of works. Um, bowing sucks, but it's a powerful enough ability that it's the, it's the sort of one where, like, when you get your second or your third copy, you're happy to have it. You buy one early, you slap, you, you, you strap it up. Obviously, yep. you don't want to bow it so much. But number two, number three, they're coming out and they're doing something. So, and there is the one other unicorn Shugenja who sort of increases the fair effect, and you can yeah. use courage stuff and such. I don't, I don't want to go too deep on it, but I think you know you'll you'll be playing the the ivory base sensei, or you'll use it. But when when you activate that ability, and you control when you activate it, right? You don't always have to use it every single time, but there'll be a moment when you do use it, and you'll feel really good about yourself. Yep. So I think this is a solid playable. The, the deck is actually going to run into the pro an embarrassment of Rish's problem, where she might be pushed out right, so now efficient force generation. Um, now you're actually at a point where you're discussing which option do I want. You know, before you did look, find yourself looking at things like Moto Ulagon, who makes guys dead because it's a two force Shugenja, you know, and stuff like that. Now you actually have to sit down and say, what is it that I want out of my personalities? How exactly do I want to line up my slots? Uh, this feels like it'll probably end up being mostly a two-off, but that's a good problem to have. It's nice to have options. Yep, absolutely. And you definitely want to run a card like this over the Kata that does something similar, for instance. Uh, this is strictly better, but you'd also rather have a guy than a Kata. There you go. Yep. Show of power, I believe. Moto Tadasu. I see a lot of show of power in deck this day. Okay, it's a Zealot! Zealot! Dios! Uh, For iron. Okay, I'm reading this. Unstoppable Battle of Fury 3 that may target spells. Destroy. So, they've got a 4 force for 7 gold, makes a Fury 3 in the base set. It's not unstoppable. Being unstoppable on Fury does give it a little more value. If you have a Death Priest, it's 4 force. I'm getting a, I'm getting a very, like, meh, okay. The yep. ability to target spells just doesn't come up that much. Um, we like spell decks. We play spell decks. But spell decks are only what percentage of the field? I'd say one-eighth of the field or something yep. at any given time. So I, you're, you're playing a card that's a little underpowered that if it hits its total value targets is average, and that's generally not the place you want to be at this point in an arc. Problematically for this guy, at the 8 gold price point, Unicorn's got a lot of options. Uh, I think the 4 force yep. Cavalry Conqueror is 8. Um, yep. Uh, means... There's a, a couple of... There's a there's a generic Shugenja. Commander no, no longer really has value once Nukef Tactics rotates out. It's literally just a flavor thing. Yep. So... So it sucks um, for this yeah. guy, I guess. He he's just uh he's just a little little bit too little bit too little. Maybe if he was four force goes to five with a death priest or he feared equal to his four, something something a little bit more to push him over. But uh yeah. doesn't quite happen. I, I think it you'll put him in, you'll try him out, eventually he'll just get replaced by a, a cheaper option, right? I mean Moto Moto Okano is base set and he's three force for five gold and puts out a minus force penalty and it's he, just better, right? Yep. At some point, cost matters. <clears throat> so. And that brings our last one to... Shinjo Sake. This is our first and only Shinjo. Yep. Uh, Shinjos almost always have art that I love. There's just something about chicks on horses beating the shit out of... Or attacking things. The Shinjo guys never have uh, my that I problem there. They're good on the horses. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Uh, Magistrate doesn't do it. Sakai has plus one force to in an army with any Ronin. Quick, what's a playable Ronin? Is Miyukin an actual Ronin? He's a Ronin actor. Uh, and, and Hirobi is a Ronin. Hirobi is a Ronin, yeah. I'm not thinking. The spirit dog, I do not believe, has the Ronin job. I'm not... Nope. Just Hirobi and... Nothing's Miyukin. coming to mind, so I don't think that's... So, this guy's here for the ability of... Give a target, I mean, person, I might force. <clears throat> if he is lower than Sakai. Plus... Okay, so three force swing... Um, average. Uh, if you're if you're dedicated to not going above the five or six gold price point, 
and you want to make sure all your guys are starting on it, you'll play Sakai, and it might turn on like a Soul Sack or something, one kind of pH restricted ability. But this feels like someone who's going to just get outclassed on both ends of the spectrum to me. It depends what the personality, the cavalry, cheap cavalry, I modified that a lot. It depends what the cheap cavalry personality base ends up looking like post rotation. I think the deck, the unicorn deck that was popular before Worlds, uh, when uh, cavalry escort was still legal, the deck that Jeff, uh, Kevin Whaley played to a top two finish, that deck is going to lose a couple of the the three ph battle well but we're a couple of sets and we already know right so there's the three three for six that has the political favor interrupt i'd probably rather just have that because i'd rather have just the raw three three four straight away now that doesn't have the battle ability and then you've got all the shugenja at the three four three six gold mark um um, and then you've got the a line in the sand guy that can say that it moves in your infantry. I just I think that slot is already pretty filled up. Mostly it's filled up, I guess, by the Shugenja guys. But I mean, there is the four gold cost cheap guy. I'd rather have uh, He Yoon, the base set reserve guy in this slot. I feel like there's just there's not much there. I I the PH right is it depends nice entirely what we see in twenty it, festivals. If we get like a to do it, we must or thoughtless sack reprint in. 20 festivals, I can see this guy's stock going up. But as it stands now, I agree. To be honest, I kind of think that... I mean, this isn't an actual battle maiden because it's not in Utaku, but I, I kind of wish the high pH military guys... If they had 4 pH, because then you could start putting some interesting design space right around the 8 honor rec. There's the Ivory Edition where uh, Izimi, I think it is, who's got like an 8 honor rec, who's a good card but never gets into decks because of an 8 honor rec. Same with like the Unicorn... And champ because eight is two full proclaim sometimes three proclaims away mm. so you, you don't get to get to that point and i think that a card like this that's already sort of underpowered you know just give it four ph and then let's see what happens i guess the fear is that might disrupt the honor matches too much but i i you know i i would have I felt like this is a slot, this little common slot is a chance for them to have reached a little bit more. And right now, it, it, you just, you're just a little not pushed enough to end up in a deck. All right, so that's Unicorn Personalities. Uh, join us next time. We'll hit the unalines, and then we'll start okay. boogieing through everything else. I'm Jesse, that's Paul. Cool, this cool. This has most certainly been Enough Talk.